hello and welcome back this video is in continuation with my previous videos which I made on finding out structural breaks in time series data by using both R and Stata software if you have not seen that I'll put the link in the description below structural break I have what is structural break why we want to do it and uh, its importance in time series analysis that I have explained in in one of the previous videos which I made so uh, for that reason I am not explaining here what is structural break in last uh, two videos one by using R and another by using Stata software I implemented cumulative sum structural break test and F test so as I mentioned there also those two tests are very limited in nature they uh, will though they find out the break date they will not find out the interval under which this break date lies and uh, the by parent structural break test which is which finds out uh, structural break through a endogenous process which we for that reason we also called it as endogenous structural break test this uh, test uh, by and parent structural break test i am going to implement today i will show you how to do it step by step so for that purpose uh, uh, i in my last video i also took uh, the ndp data net domestic product of india at 2045 base prices the same data i am using today also there i saw that depending upon the test the result of a test and kusum test varies the kusum test find out found a one break date which is different from than the f test so here uh, this video contains two parts in the first part i will show you how to implement the by parent test and in the second part i will show you how to bring kusum test and f test uh, and find out whether there is any remaining test break date uh, remained after implementing also the by parent test so for doing the by parent structural break test you have to in install certain packages this struct change package is essential so and all these packages are required for time series analysis this package for importing the excel data into r so i have the excel data saved in the directory under the name ndpfc 2045 xls so i am importing that under another name called ndp so first what i have to do i have to call all the packages by reading by loading the as library so then i have to import this one so if i want to see the so what is the how the ndp data looks like so this data is in log format i converted the actual value into log values so the the data file contains only one variable called ln ndp and if you can see here this is not in time series format this is a dat data frame format so for any time series analysis you have to convert the data into a time series data i know that this data starts from 1970 and it's a yearly data and it's in r2016 so for that to convert the ndp data uh, which is in data frame format into a time series data you have to type ts command under that 
you under that you have to write NDP below start date and end date the frequency which is one because this is a yearly data as I mentioned also previously that when you have quarterly data you have to mention frequency 4 and when you have monthly data you have to mention frequency is equal to 12 so if I run it you can see now the data is converted into time series data here I am saving under the name NDP only it just replaced it so if you want to save sometimes when you are doing analysis it's better to save in another name so that you can distinguish whether it's a time series format or in data format uh, so saving under the same name is no problem but it's not a good practice so then you can see that this data is uh, in time series data now it uh, there are 47 observation which starts from 1970 to 2016 ends up then I need a time variable uh, over which on which I am regressing my NDPR to find out the take date. So I'll generate the time. You can do, uh, you can generate any time or interval value variable by typing this command. So first, what I will do that I will plot the data because uh, it is essential to see how the data looks like and by looking at the you know trend of the data whether we can find out that there is in any uh, there is any structural change in the series or not so if you can see this is taking a little time so i also showed in my previous videos that uh, Okay, this is not coming okay, anyway. Okay, this is the thing. Now you can see there is a change in the okay, there is there is a change in the trend here during this period. Also, there is change during uh, yeah, this this two are visible. Are these two changes are the break uh, represent the break date that we don't know this is uh, a, a mere observation through which uh, we are saying that so if uh, we then by by using the viper and test we will find out whether the there is any break date break break in the series during this time or during this time so to do that uh, the viper and uh, structural break test the command is very simple the command is break points so what i uh, will do now i'll give a new name i'll uh, i'll generate a new variable called ndp break points then come up this function you have to write break point points then ndp the variable for which you are going to find out the break dates then i am regressing it over time then what is this h h is the number of segment for which uh, the segment uh, in which we, you are saying that uh, software r that find out a uh, break date generally this is uh, the rule of thumb is that it should be the 15 percent of the total observation here we have 47 observation so so uh, i have given uh, i have taken 7 here so what by pattern uh, test do that it uh, within this 7 observation for 7 observation it will find out the minimum sum of square thus then by using aic and bic criteria Similarly, uh, it will find out whether that minimum one is sufficient. It, so it will do for whole the series likewise and give you those years in which the residual sum of square is minimum and yeah, sufficient. 
so that that way uh, so that is the meaning of this one so if i'll run it you can see it is implemented now it's getting yeah it's implemented now if i'll run it this one this i i'll get this result i'll just minimize it then you can see there is it is saying that breakpoints at observation number 92136 so which corresponding to the year 1978 1999 and 2005 1990 i'm sorry and 2005 these there are three structural breaks in the data so another innovation you can do if you will type breakpoints breaks if you want to find out only one structural break you can do this way you have to type breaks is equal to one it's done then you see at 1992 there is a structural break this is changing because uh, the big the break date here changed because of this condition what we'll do we'll go with the three structural break thing with there is no condition on the number of structural break then what i'll show you i will uh, show you the graph now now if you will see that as i told as i told earlier there is one change here 1978 79 you can see then there is a change around this period then this is not visible during 2004 5 but yes from the graph you can see actually that whether there is you can predict that whether there is 1978 79 1990 around this period and 2004 5 period there is structural break in the data so now we'll see like its coefficients then that means from which period to which period the potential it might lie so the break date might lie so if i'll type coefficient and ndp it will give me the coefficient the first structural break is between 1970-78 okay now this this uh, this is the oh i'm sorry this is the segment 1970 to 78 then 79 to 90 90 91 to 2005 2006 to 2010 there are four segments now in our data so this is done so what we'll see that whether there is any additional change in the series remain or not so to do that we will use the f test and kusum test together with the by baron the break dates which we get uh, which we got from the by baron test so we are we are now checking whether there is any break in the mean or not so to do that i am doing this one i am generating a new variable called additional break date then efv for doing this function is for doing the f test then i am regressing the net domestic product on the break dates break factors which i got from which i am getting from ndp break points okay then you have to type of test i want to do i want to do a kusum test if i'll do that if i'll run it now i'll plot it now you can see what this implies is that you know 
the break is around this point but this is not significant because the line is not moving out of my the two red bands which the F statistics implies so there is we can from this we can say that there is no additional structural break in the data remain after you after you after you take uh, after you find out the structural break by using the endogenous by parent structural break test so this is this is uh, for the structural break test i covered the both the biparam test and the kosum test and f test by using both the r start software and stata software if there is any confusion or any mistake you can comment below i'll also mention both the test both the previous video below this uh, below in the description of this video if you have not watched those you can watch it and uh, yes thank you very much for watching